This is my build of the Lock Precision 4 inch diameter goblin, which is an upscale of the original Estes goblin and my level 1 certification. I purchased the Quantum Airframe upgrade. I decided to try for my level 1 certification about 10 days before the launch date, so I had to hurry to build my model. Sand the fins. I like the look of square edges on the fins, so I didn't bevel them, although I know this is less aerodynamic. My fins had some imperfections, including a chip. Fill any imperfections with wood putty and sand again. Apply two coats of sanding sealer, lightly sanding after each coat. Hammer the T-nuts into the centering rings. Rough sand the motor tubing so epoxy will better adhere to it. With all the pieces and throughout the whole modeling process, be smart and trim and file as necessary to make the pieces fit well. Also, be smart with all things. Be smart and wear a seat belt. Be smart and wash your hands after wiping your ass. Be smart and don't be stupid and get your COVID vaccine. My mom is going to give my video a thumbs down for that comment. Measure and epoxy the center and forward centering rings. Leave off the aft centering ring. Apply epoxy fillets. I will comment more on the measuring later in this video. Do not get epoxy where the fins will attach to the motor tubing. I realized I was going to need a lot more epoxy than I had, so I switched to a clear epoxy at this stage. Fasten the eye bolt to the forward centering ring. Epoxy it in place and epoxy the T-nuts being sure not to get epoxy in the threads. Test fit the motor housing and fins. Apply epoxy inside the fuselage with a stick or dowel. Fillet the forward centering ring from the top. Use CA glue to attach the fins to the motor housing and then fillet all the joints inside with epoxy. If you purchase the Quantum Airframe, prime with plastic bonding primer. Otherwise, prime with regular primer. I painted a black band instead of using the black band sticker included with the kit. When masking for spraying multiple colors, apply an additional coat of paint to seal the tape boundary. I decided to paint my model purple instead of yellow as shown in the instructions. Drill holes for the rail buttons. Fasten the rail buttons and apply epoxy to the nuts on the inside. Epoxy the bottom centering ring to the bottom of the motor mount and fillet. The instructions say to attach the middle centering ring 5.5 inches from the end of the motor tube, but they don't say on which side of the measurement to align the ring. I chose wrong. The motor tubing is supposed to extend 1 8 of an inch below the bottom centering ring, but mine is flush. Build the 29 and 38 millimeter motor adapters. It was now the day before the launch and I still had to finish the nose cone. Trim, apply plastic putty, and sand. I used a random orbital sander with 220 grit paper. The ridges on the nose cone stuck out too far for the cone to fit into the quantum airframe, so I sanded them down too. Mask and apply plastic bonding primer. Paint it gloss black. Attach the shock cord to the eye bolt inside the fuselage. Don't use the plastic loop on the nose cone to attach the other end. Instead, drill holes and feed the shock cord through them. The night before the launch, we applied the stickers with some of the paint still tacky. We didn't have enough time to put on the clear coat. We had a successful launch and earned our level 1 certification with an H143 motor with the ejection delay set to 8 seconds. Rocket Sim estimated about 1,950 feet, but that probably didn't take into account the extra weight of the quantum airframe. Our altimeter measured the altitude at 990 feet. Ready. Right, we're going to go here. We're going 
It was a fun day outside of Brookings, South Dakota with the South Dakota Rocket Jockeys. Special thanks to Hans, Dave, Eric, Jay, and Dana for their guidance, education, and warm welcoming.